what they did, Lord Jesus Christ. Then David said to him, will you take me down to this band of raiders? And he said, swear to me by God that you will not kill me nor turn me over to the hand of my master and I will bring you down to this band. I need to help somebody to understand. I need to help you understand. And the enemy is so nasty that he will even turn on his own when they have no more use for them. And so there's going to be someone in the camp uh uh-huh, that has worked the magic against you, uh uh-huh, that has talked about you. Girl, why don't you do it? I think I am. Look, it's going to be somebody that's going to be talking trash about you. Somebody that's done been putting their mouth on your marriage. Uh, some, oh God, where that come from? Uh, somebody that's done been sowing discord, uh, creating all kinds of problems. Uh, oh my God. But somebody that was in the camp with them while all that was going on, uh, oh boy, they're going to get rid of them uh, because it says they were no more useful for them. He was no more useful for them at all. And so when he became no more useful for the enemy, the enemy dropped him off on the side of the road. Could I tell somebody that God got somebody in your pathway that's going to give you all the information, Lord help me, that you need? Is somebody going to come up in your path to give you all the information that you need that's going to let you know, God help me this morning, going to let you know exactly what you need to do, let you know exactly where your stuff at, let you know the exact course of action that they, God help me, that they took to try to destroy you. God got somebody set in the pathway, so help me God. Watch it, what I tell you. Oh my Lord Jesus. Uh, and that, that, that was verse 11 through 15 I just had to help you with. Now let's run down to verse 16. Verse 16. God help me, Lord, I love you, man. Verse 16. Verse 16 says this here. And when he had brought David down, the Amalekites had disbanded and spread all over the land. Check it out now. The, 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 the boy took David exactly to the place. Now, he took him exactly to the place of the people, uh, oh boy, that had took David's them stuff, took him to board the enemy, led him right to the place. Don't y'all, 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 y'all don't hear. Hey, y'all hear God this morning. He said the enemy led him right to the place. God help me. The enemy led them straight to the place. God help me. Let them straight to the place where the stuff was. David gets there and it says in verse 16 that the Amalekites had disbanded and had spread all over the land. What that means is, is they were broke all up. They wasn't one unit. They were broke all up into different places. Some were over here. Some were boot scootin' boogie. And some of them was electric slide. And some of them was cha-cha. And they was over in different places doing different things. Spread out all through the land, it said. And they were eating and drinking and dancing. I told y'all they were partying. Didn't I tell you? They were cha-cha and electric sliding, baby. Some of them was whipping and nay and all kinds of stuff. Some of them was Meg the Stallion. They were doing it all. So they were eating and drinking and dancing because of the great spoil that they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. They were having a good time with David them stuff. But because God is so wise and God is so amazing in what he does, he's so awesome in how he does everything that he does. He had allowed them jokers to be broke up, oh boy, into separate places says, David looks and see them and say, hold up, just wait, 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 I know them, now hold up, wait a minute, I know them ain't my Air Force One, they over there dancing in, uh-uh, now, I, wait a minute, is that my Chanel coat right now that he over there dancing in, hold up just a minute, it's something, wait, 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 hold, 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 wait, 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 hold up just one minute, uh-uh, now, I know that's not my Louis Vuitton that they over there dancing in, no, not my red bottoms, uh-uh, no, David looks and see them with their stuff, verse 17 says, then David and his men struck them down, whoop, there it is, strategy. Struck them down in battle from twilight until the evening of the next day. Whoop, they butt. Now you talking about getting a whooping. 
Now that's getting a whooping. The average fights only last maybe five minutes or so before you just get tired. And, you know, especially if you out of shape and all. Now, you know, now these jokers got whooped from the twilight. It says until the evening of the next day, they got they butt whooped. You hear me? And it says, and not a man of them escaped. Every one of them got whooped, except 400 young men who rode camels and fled. Every one of them got their butts beat. 400 of them got out of there, so they think. But we're going to get that at another time. Uh huh. And so verse 18 says this here. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken. And rescued his two wives. Now, I need y'all to understand something. I got to give you this here so that you understand. David recovers every bit of it. It gives credit to David. Uh, Verse 19, I'm going to come back and tell you why. It gives credit to David. It says, nothing of theirs was missing, neither small nor great sons of daughters, spoil or anything that had been taken. David recovered it all I done told y'all, the Lord said to tell you, you are not going to be sick much longer. You are not going to be sick much longer. I told you what God said. You are not going to be sick much longer. To recover, this is what recover means. It means to return to a normal state of health, mind, or strength. To return to a normal state of health, mind, or strength. Second definition of recover means to find or regain possession of something that was lost or stolen. Now, that needed to be put in place in both ways. Because when they pulled up and seen that all of their their city had been burned, their wives, their children had been taken captive, it literally made them physically sick. Physically sick in the mind, which means recover to return to a normal state of health, mind, and strength. And then they saw that all they stuff had been taken, which is the second definition, which is to find or regain possession of something that was stolen or lost. I'm just trying to stop by today as a servant of God, one that loves him and tries her best to assure evil to the best that she can. Sometimes she fail, but uh, may the Lord have mercy on me with that. Um, but I'm just a servant, just stopping by to tell God's people what thus saith the Lord today and to try to encourage you during this time that we are going through right now. Oh my God, God has so much in store. It's so much that is in store. It's so much great stuff that is in store. I'm telling you, you are not going to be sick much longer. God help me. You are not going to be sick much longer. I'm trying to tell you, you are not going to be sick much longer. And so David recovers every bit of it, it says. And so when you go on down, just for now, I'm not going to read the rest of it, but I'm going to tell you, remember I told you that I'm going to tell you why. In verse 18, it says, David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken. I'm going to tell you why the scripture gives credit to David for recovering everything. David, as he was on his journey, these people that were with him began to grump, they began to be disgruntled and began to complain, began to uh, uh, fuss, you know, they began to trip, they were tripping, they began to fuss and all. And so David, uh, he ended up, uh, some of them, it said they were so faint that they were left by the side. He had to leave them and he had to go on in. So not everybody is going to make the journey. And so the Lord would give the credit to David because David would be the one that would say, hey, listen, I I don't care what you jokers say. I don't care how you jokers are talking. I'm going in here to recover everything that God has for me. If I have to go by myself, I'll go. David would say, if I have to leave you, you and you, I'm going to go in to do what the Lord has for me to do. David would have said it like this right here. I'm going to tell y'all exactly how David said what he said. Uh, Let's see how many of y'all can catch me with this. Uh, This is what David was saying. He said, a charge to keep I have. And a God to glorify. A never dying soul to save. I've got to get fitted for this guy. To serve this present age. That's my calling to fulfill. And oh, may all my 
powers engaged, I'm about to do my master's will. That's what David was letting them know. I'm going in. I don't care. I'm sorry that you don't got tired. I'm sorry that you don't want to hang on. I'm sorry that you ain't got enough strength in you for you to move on. But I've got to go. Why? Because they got some stuff that belongs to me. And this Egyptian, which was part of their army, done already told me that where they are and done told me that everybody is in good standing. I got to go. I done went and peeped it out and seen them parting with my stuff. And now I want my stuff. And it said because of his tenacity, because of his fearlessness, because of his trust in God, I'm trying to tell you, because of his trust in God, oh Lord, I love you, because of his faith in God, because David, would he remain faithful to his faith? When he got in there, it says he recovered it all. God help me, please. He recovered it all. I'm just a messenger today. I'm like the song say, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody that can save anybody. I'm just trying to tell you. I'm just trying to tell you that you are not going to be sick much longer. God, I love you. I don't care what they say about a pandemic uh, that's going on. would we'll not tell any of you to not take care of yourselves. Please make sure you do because I do, but I do it anyway because I feel like in order to work for God, you need to be as healthy as you can. That's why I'm working on myself. And so I would say this to you that it doesn't matter how long they say say that the pandemic is going to be. Nobody knows the amount of time except but God. But you better let them know I'm not going to be sick uh, much longer. You know, I'm not going to have to deal with the fact of seeing people dying much longer. I'm not going to have to deal with the fact of seeing doors of of churches be closed uh, or whatever. I have a ministry. Uh, You know, I'm not going to have to see that much longer because uh, there is coming an end to this and we shall, Lord help me please, I hope they hear me, God. I hope they hear me hollering for you today. I'm crying loud, ain't I? And so, uh, yeah, I'm trying to tell you, it's not going to be much longer, God. Help me, please. Father, I honor and I adore you today. I delight myself in you today, God. I submit, surrender everything to you. You're all I have, man. You're all I have. You're all I know. And God, you are all that I could ever hope to be. Oh, Father, I thank you for being able to come before your people, God. It's all always an honor because uh, it's an honor to me because of the simple fact when I look back over my life and I see where you brought me from oh my God I don't even qualify to do what I do it's because of your anointing it is because of your grace which is your ability to move God it is the strength of God it is because of that that I can do what I do I pray that I've given you service on today God I pray that I've done you justice today in talking to your people I pray that I've dotted every I and crossed every T I've spoken every word according to the oracles of how you would have for it to be that I've articulated it just like the way you would have for it to be. I pray that wisdom has found its entrance in. I pray that your word has found its entrance in uh, because Psalms 119 says at the entrance of your word that it giveth light, oh God, and that it would give some understanding unto the simple things, God. I thank you that your word has illuminated the pathway, God. Oh, you have shone bright today like a diamond, God. We give honor to you. We're not magnifying. I ain't studying the devil. We're not magnifying anything about him. I don't even care nothing about him for real because I look to the hills from which cometh my help because all my help I don't find out come from you. I tried trusting folk that didn't get me nowhere. Oh, I don't put my trust in a lot of stuff that didn't get me nowhere, but God, my trust is now in you. And so you're the author and the finisher of our faith, God. I thank you, mighty God, for what you are doing, Lord. I pray for those on this live, God, that have prayer requests. God, I connect to them concerning the things that are according to your will, God. If it's according to your will, I connect my faith with them. And to say that your will be done, God. And to say that your kingdom come and be established in this earth. Uh, uh, God, to say, Lord, uh, that you would lead us not into temptation, but deliver us uh, from the hand of the evil one, God. We thank you for the path that you have set for us, God. We thank you for your word coming to pass. 
ask, Lord. We thank you for fulfilling every promise, God. Do what you do and be who you are, because you're a great big God, and you do some great big things. I honor you. I salute you. I bow before you as the King of Kings today and the Lord of Lords on. And today, God, I thank you.